In this video, we're going to talk about buffers. This is a big topic on MCAT, so definitely make sure you understand it well. The first thing we want to discuss is what is a buffer? As you might recall, buffers are aqueous solutions that minimize pH change. This means when you take a buffer solution, you add some acid or you add some base, the pH is only going to change by a very small amount. In other words, buffer solutions are good at resisting pH change. The next thing you want to know is how do you make a buffer solution? There are two different ways. You can either take a weak acid and a conjugate base and add it to solution, or you can take a weak base and its conjugate acid and add it to solution. So in other words, you can make a buffer by adding the conjugate pair of a weak acid or weak base in solution. Very notably, you cannot make a buffer solution using strong acids or strong bases. All right. The next thing is, if you think about it, in this solution that we're making to use a buffer, this is different from what we looked at before. Before, when we were looking at pH calculations, we were looking at just having a strong acid or a weak acid or a strong base or a weak base in solution by itself. This time, we're looking at having a weak acid and its conjugate base or a weak base plus its conjugate acid in solution. So this is a different case than before, so the pH calculation is also different. We can do the calculation using the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. pH equals pKa plus log of A minus over HA. A minus here is the concentration of the conjugate base. HA is the concentration of the weak acid. We're going to do several examples in this video showing you how to apply the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation to do pH calculations. Okay. Also, important for LAMCAT, you want to know the characteristics of a good buffer solution. The first is, you want high concentrations of both species in the conjugate pair. If you have a buffer solution, you want it to be able to absorb a lot of acid and a lot of base and still be able to minimize pH change. And you can achieve this if your conjugate pair have very high concentrations in solution. This is the idea of buffer capacity. And of course, this means if you have a buffer at very low concentrations, that doesn't make for a very good buffer. It has a low buffer capacity. The other good feature of a good buffer, you want it to have a pKa close to the desired pH. So when you're selecting a weak acid and its conjugate base to make a buffer solution, you take a look at the pKa of that weak acid. You want to make sure that the pKa of that weak acid is close to whatever pH value you're trying to maintain in solution. In subsequent videos, we're going to explain why this is important. Okay. So now that we know what buffers are, let's take a look at a few example questions. Our first situation, we want to know what is the pH of a solution made from adding three moles of acetic acid, which has a pKa of 4.8, and three moles of sodium acetate, which is the conjugate base of acetic acid, to one liter of water. All right. So at first, this seems pretty similar to some of the examples we did before. We want to know what is the pH of this solution. But you want to take note, this is not just an individual acid or base. We've got a weak acid and we've got its conjugate base in the same solution. We're dealing with a buffer. So that means the first thing you want to do is write out the equation for calculating the pH of a buffer solution, the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. All right, so the next thing you want to do is to calculate the pH, we need several pieces of information. We need the pKa, which is given to us, that's 4.8. We need the concentration of the conjugate base and the concentration of the weak acid. In this case, the conjugate base concentration is moles of conjugate base divided by the volume. We know that we added three moles of conjugate base right, three moles of sodium acetate to one liter of water. That's a three molar concentration. The same is true for the weak acid concentration. We have three moles of acetic acid also in the same one liter of water. 
So we can essentially plug this in to say that the pH is equal to the pKa of 4.8 plus log of 3 over 3, right? Both of these concentrations are 3 molar. If you have log of 3 over 3, that's just the log of 1, and log of 1 is equal to 0. So this gives us pH is equal to 4.8 plus 0, which of course is just 4.8. All right, this is the buffer that we're dealing with. And what you can take note is when you have equal quantities of the weak acid and conjugate base, the pH of the solution is simply equal to its pKa. All right, so now let's take a look at what happens if we were to add 0 0.01 moles of HCl. So we're going to add some acid and we're going to ask what happens to our pH. So in this case, the first thing we want to know is what is the HCl going to do? Well, HCl, hydrochloric acid, we know it's a strong acid. As a strong acid, it's going to dissociate completely in solution to form 0 0.01 moles of hydrogen ion and 0 0.01 moles of the chloride anion, the conjugate base. When you form that 0 0.01 moles of hydrogen ion in solution, it's going to combine with the acetate, the weak base in solution. And when the acetate combines with hydrogen ion, it's going to form acetic acid. So that means if you think about our A minus concentration, before we had three moles in one liter, now 0 0.01 moles of that is going to be gone. It's going to get consumed by the hydrogen ion concentration. So now we have 2.99 moles in one liter, so that's a concentration of 2.99 molar. For the weak acid, well, what we said is that the conjugate base, the acetate, it combined with the hydrogen ion to form acetic acid. So before we had three moles of acetic acid, now we're going to have an extra 0 0.01 moles. So we have 3.01 moles of acetic acid in the same one liter, so that's a concentration of 3.01 molar. So to calculate the pH, we use the same equation, henderson hasselbach pH is equal to the pKa, which is still 4.8, plus log of the conjugate base concentration, 2.99, divided by the weak acid concentration, 3.01. And in this case, you can see it's slightly different, right? 4.8 and log of 2.99 over 3.01. It's different, but remember, when we do MCAT math, we round numbers. And 2.99 divided by 3.01, that's basically 1. And log of 1 is 0. So in this case, our pH is essentially still 4.8. Technically, it's slightly less than 4.8 because you did add some acid. But remember, our buffers resist pH change, and we can see indeed the pH change is minimal. Okay, so at this point, you're probably thinking, hey, this is a pretty good buffer. I added a strong acid, and there was almost no pH change. But someone might say, well, hey, you had three moles of the acid and conjugate base, and you only added 0 0.01 moles of HCl. The reason why the pH didn't change that much was because you added so little acid to begin with. So let's go ahead and take a look at a situation where we add 0 0.01 moles of HCl to pure water. So now I want to know if the buffer wasn't present, what happens to the pH? Okay, so since this is a strong acid, remember, strong acids dissociate completely, so the concentration of the strong acid is 0 0.01 moles in one liter, which is simply 0 0.01 molar. Remember, well, the assumption we can make here is as strong acids dissociate completely in solution, the concentration of the strong acid is the same as the concentration of hydrogen ion in solution. So we're simply just going to take the negative log of 0 0.01.
and negative log of 0 0.01 is the same thing as negative log of 10 to the negative 2. So we look at negative log of 10 to the negative 2, that gives us a value of 2. So essentially saying that if you don't have a buffer present, if you added 0 0.01 moles of HCl, your pH is 2, right? Neutral water starts at 7. You went from 7 to 2. When our buffer was present, you went from 4.8 to just a little tiny bit below 4.8. So again, further demonstrating how effective buffers can be at resisting pH change.